Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Distinguished delegates, presenters and participants from SARC member states and other regions around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very thankful to all of you for joining us in the SARC webinar on use of solar energy in water desalination. My name is Mohammad Umar Mukhtar and I am working at SARC Energy Center as research fellow energy transport and environment. I shall be moderating today's SARC webinar as well as presenting uh, in and the the aim of this webinar. Opportunities and challenges linked with the use of solar thermal desalination and purification. any policy, regulatory, or project-based initiative. This webinar will also help SEC link up with experts with the, and the professionals of the SARC region by developing strong networks with the distinguished experts in the field. In the long run, through such insightful webinars, SARC Energy Center aims to strengthen its bond with global experts and SARC professionals. South Asia is a water-stressed region and a water crisis is increasing for many regions in South Asia. Apart from Bhutan and Nepal, South Asia's per capita water availability is already below the world average. Bangalore, Karachi and Kabul are among the 10 cities in the world that are on the verge of an imminent water crisis. In fact, according to Asian Development Bank, Water supply in India may fall 50% below demand by 2030. But with abundant solar energy potential in South Asia, a viable economic case could be built for solar thermal and solar PV based desalination. Therefore, this webinar will be an thermal desalination as well as PV desalination of seawater, 
as so solar thermal desalination is in its early stages with a few projects recently established therefore the vertical knowledge but will also share the important learnings from those recent projects and will aim to share with the sar professionals the solutions to commonly encountered problems during those projects the possible participants of the webinar would be from relevant government departments research organizations academia associated industry and entrepreneurs etc specifically from south asia i am also grateful to our deputy director dr uh, shweb uh, who is present here uh, in today's webinar i am also grateful to our panelist mr bilal hussain research fellow power at sark energy center dear participants you will have the opportunity to ask questions to presenters by typing your questions or clicking to the raised hand option into the attendees panel of the main window of go to webinar software you may also send in your questions at any time during the presentation we will collect these questions and address them during the question answer session at the end of each presentation additionally you will also have a chance to share your views at the end of the webinar or through emails now moving on to the presentations our panelist mr bilal hussain is an electrical engineer from uit lahore and finished his masters on renewable energy management from university of applied sciences cologne germany he has served in national transmission and dispatch company pakistan for around 5 years as assistant manager in several directorates notably central power purchase agency and power system planning he has an extensive experience in grid system engineering power system planning and energy purchase agreements on academic front he has a publication to his name and has executed several model based research projects focusing on energy technology and cost factors in multiple countries he holds a strong grip on the models and his areas of interest are regional energy cooperation and dialogue sustainable power systems and renewable energy technologies uh, i would move towards uh, mr bilal hussain so mr bilal can you hear me uh, yes thank you umar i can hear you clearly uh can you see my screen and can you hear me now yes your screen is visible you may please go ahead okay perfect so uh thank you omar good morning everybody uh, i am bilal hussain i am a research fellow power at sark energy center as you have already been briefed about me uh so uh, in this presentation i will be discussing uh the match for uh, commercially viable solar desalination technologies which are uh, currently being under focus uh, for the small island states so uh, the scheme of the presentation uh, would be pretty simple uh, i will uh, just start with a brief context of uh, the drivers which uh, are motivating to use renewable energy based desalination in islands uh then i'll be briefly going through uh, the desalination technologies and their peculiar characteristics which enable us to uh combine them with the available renewable energy sources and then we will have a brief overview of the market segmentation of renewable desalination and uh then i will go through a little case study which is basically an irena study been done in 2015 on small islands where we will find some very interesting graphs on the economics of different re uh, desalination solutions in the end we will just uh, collect some takeaways and a little bit outlook in this regard so uh starting with the island context uh, the pretty basic stuff is that islands are surrounded from everywhere uh, the vast oceans that indicates that they are isolated from uh, large inhabited uh, areas uh, which indicate uh, that uh, in cases of emergency there has to be the water fresh water sources available for the inhabitants and therefore either 
uh, uh, the infrastructure should be there for providing that fresh water or in terms of the storage, uh, some imported fresh water or other sources must be available. Uh, the second thing uh, is the topographical limitations of uh, island states generally being surrounded by the salt water around uh, the uh, uh, groundwater uh, uh, storages or the freshwater resources, the lenses and the lakes are always prone to uh, salt water intrusion. And uh, this fact becomes even more dangerous in times of uh, climatic extremes like cyclones or typhoons and this adds to further complexity that the climate change is affecting the island states more in in respect to uh, increasing the extreme effects of the climate extremities and uh, uh, on top of that the seasonal variations uh, are already hitting uh, the supply demand mismatch in islands uh, one particular aspect is the tourist seasons, which uh, uh, can increase or decrease the uh, water demand significantly. Uh, some islands may have dry spells in uh, summers and, uh, sorry, in winters and uh, uh, floodings in summer's time, uh, which can badly affect uh, the supply demand uh, management. One uh, other aspect is is in the islands. Uh, generally, the low lying uh, low lying areas of the islands do not have uh, pretty good groundwater resources, and the very steep uh, island areas uh, generally find a lot of uh, water runoffs uh, right after the rainfall, and it's very difficult to even store the rainwater. Uh, under these uh, challenges, uh, the basic option for island states is to either import uh, water for its needs or uh, to install the desalination plants uh, based on the conventional fossil fuel technologies. In that case, even they have to import more fossil fuels. So that leads the basic motivation of why the renewable energy desalination becomes crucial for island states. Uh, the prime factors are, of course, two. The one uh, is the fuel costs reduction because uh, renewable energies may, may have the initial capital cost, but they are essentially having uh, no fuel costs, which can actually, in effect, give more chances of economic development in the island states. Uh, then the second prime factor are the uh, reduced imports of the fossil fuels that gives the security of supplies uh, and decreases the dependence on the imported uh, uh, fuel source. Now, uh, quickly moving to the next uh, uh, stage. Um, I will, in, in the couple of slides, I will give you a brief overview of the uh, uh, mature technologies which are actually available in the pilot form or the commercial form around the world. Uh, firstly, if we segregate in, uh, in the category of thermal driven uh, desalinations, the first category is the multi-stage uh, flash desalination, which is uh, essentially uh, based on the principle of evaporation. Uh, the prime principle of operation is that the cold feed of the saline uh, seawater uh, comes through uh, the low pressure flash chambers. It is heated and uh, once the heated fluid goes into the low pressure flash chamber, it evaporates uh, very quickly and condensates onto the collecting uh, vessels. Uh, of course, the number of stages, uh, the more number of stages you add for evaporation, the more quality of water is improved. But generally, the multi-stage flash or uh, multi-effect desalination or any kind of technology which is working on the evaporation, it produces better uh, water quality in terms of uh, lower salinity. Uh, one particular uh, factor of multi-stage flash is that the top brine temperatures uh, are around 112 degrees centigrade. Uh, this temperature is not so low, but not so high as well, and it qualifies uh, these kind of solutions to work with the concentrated solar plant uh, steam feed. Uh, 
uh, of course, that adds uh, a little bit penalty of uh, having uh, no possibility of generating electricity from that steam. Uh, but going on to the next uh, uh, technology type, which is the multiple uh, multi-effect desalination, that drawback is actually compensated. Uh, the principle is same, of course, evaporation, but in a slightly different uh, mode of operation where the uh, cold feed from the seawater is sprayed onto uh, the motive uh, steam pipe in the first uh, stage of low pressure chamber, which uh, evaporates uh, the clean water from the feed uh, uh, input. And that vapors are collected in a tube and in the next stage it appears uh, it basically evaporates the further uh, uh, cold feed of the saline water so the number of stages you add is basically increasing the quality of the water uh, clean water output um, the good thing about this technology is that the uh, technology requires medium operating temperatures of around 70 degrees centigrade. And at this temperature, uh, the low grade waste heat from the concentrated solar plants can be utilized. So generally, the low grade uh, heat is uh, very inefficient in terms of producing electricity. And if it is used in terms of desalination, then it's a better utilization of resource. And that adds to the benefit of uh, multi-effect desalination solutions that uh, we generally consider the waste heat that is going to be wasted anyways to be used in desalination. Therefore, it's essentially a resource. reverse osmosis and uh, this slowly uh, uh, forcing the water onto the membrane and uh, with that pressure uh, uh, the clean or drinkable water is step line water remains on the other side because it requires the pressure uh, it's uh, in that almost a major portion of electricity to water salinity because that is basically indicating the osmotic pressure that is needed to operate such plants. And uh, the available technologies today for commercial operations, these plants are sensitive to energy fluctuations, which is in fact an area where uh, uh, it's a big barrier for connecting such kind of plants with the conventional renewable resources uh, without uh, storage uh, infrastructure. Therefore, uh, more recent development is happening on this side. And uh, if breakthrough occurs and uh, flexible, it will help in further expansion of these kind of technological solutions. The other type of of uh, electricity driven desalination technique is the electrodialysis which is in fact a principle quite similar to two uh, opposite charge electrodes are given a dc electric supply and uh, it does the separation work for clean water and saline water um, electrodialysis of course has a very limited application and it's generally feasible for brackish water applications uh, but one peculiar fact of uh, uh, the operation on DC supply indicates that we can uh, directly integrate such solutions with uh, photovoltaic sources uh, in addition to that there are several other solutions which fall uh, under different thermal or, or uh, electricity driven categories. Uh, one is to use a mechanical or compression system, uh, which is in fact uh, uh, compressing the clean water and vaporization using the pressure difference. Um, uh, thermal vapor compression, compression uh, system energy as well, because it requires uh, a mechanical profile and uh, more uh, feasibility is there to integrate such solutions with offshore wind. The other technology is a membrane distillation, which is sort of a hybrid uh, between a membrane uh, uh, technological option and 
and attention and uh, the terms of uh, authorization um, particular uh, benefit in terms of integration with renewables is that they operate on a lower feed water temperatures of 60 to 90 degree centigrade that means that uh, the waste heat from uh, concentrated solar plants can be effectively utilized in operating such solutions then uh, of course this uh, membrane distillation technology is uh, quite insensitive to the energy fluctuations and uh, only a few pilot projects are there in the world at the moment operating in this regard and it's generally applied on a lower scale of uh, size uh, roughly around 10 meter cube per day then the other technology is the open cycle ocean thermal energy conversion based desalination which uh, takes the benefit of the primary phenomena of uh, temperature gradient as we move from the surface of ocean downwards generally uh, uh, in the oceans we can find a gradient of 25 degrees centigrade uh, in the depth of 500 to 1000 meters uh, the principle of the technology is uh, basically the low pressure in feed evaporates by the uh, um, uh, hot, relatively hot water from the upper ocean layer and then it expands in a turbine and condenses using the uh, cold water from the lower layer. Uh, this technology is pretty much in the R&D stage at the moment. The efficiency is very little, just 3 to 5%. That indicates a lot of seawater has to be processed to get a certain amount of uh, uh, drinkable clean water. Uh, but if this kind of technology matures up to the commercial stage, it holds quite a benefit for island states. Uh, the uh, other technology is a freezing option, which uh, in fact principally dependent on freezing a certain volume of water uh, where the dissolved salts get separated and can be rinsed out. Freezing is generally less energy intensive. It almost uh, takes 15% of the energy that is required for vaporization. And uh, it can essentially work with any kind of renewable energy. And in fact, it can work with solar thermal as well using absorption chillers. Uh, of course, it requires uh, more energy than the reverse osmosis-based plants. Uh, but the freezing technology is also under R&D today. So uh, in this slide, I will just give a brief overview of the market uh, segmentation worldwide and uh, in particular in the small island states. Uh, at the moment, you can see that uh, most of the desalination market is dominated by reverse osmosis plants. Uh, worldwide, its percentage share is 66%, uh, while the, in the islands, it's more. It's roughly around 80%. And the prime reason for the dominance of reverse osmosis plants are their scalability uh, and modular uh, ability. Uh, reverse osmosis plants can be actually constructed in a small scale, medium scale, and large scale. And um, generally, the islands uh, usually find applications in the small to medium scale in which this technology is pretty mature on the commercial basis. Generally, uh, islands would go for the small scale op options, which um, roughly cover around uh, uh, 10 to 1,000 uh, cubic meters of uh, water production per day. Uh, and uh, the, the islands where we have more densely populated communities and uh, a little bit central infrastructure, the medium scale uh, desalination plants are also uh, available in the range of 1,000 to uh, 100,000 cubic meters per day. Uh, of course, both of uh, all of these technologies at the moment are dominantly working with uh, the conventional fossil power. Um, after the uh, reverse osmosis technology, uh, the dominant technology is the multi-stage uh, flash uh, uh, desalination. But uh, in the island states, the multi-state uh, multi-stage flash and multi-effect desalination are quite at par with each other. And of course, this um, electrodialysis also finds more applications in the island states because of uh, abundant availability of brackish water. Uh, when we talk about the possible combinations of uh, renewable energy sources uh, with different desalination technologies, uh, then I can have uh, 
I can show you actually a very interesting graph on, on the left side, which uh, segregates the different combinations in terms of the indirect and the direct usage of solar. Uh, in terms of the direct usage of solar, mostly the unconventional types like solar still or humidification or dehumidification technologies uh, are available and they are available long time but they, uh, their scalability is very small and they are used only for temporary or for uh, remote communities uh, and for very small uh, scale applications. For the indirect types, uh, we have mainly photovoltaic and solar thermal. And uh, photovoltaics finds applications uh, uh, in respect to reverse osmosis, desalination plants, electrodialysis plants, and mechanical vapor compression plants. Um, uh, it's because the photovoltaics are producing electricity only and uh, uh, the reverse osmosis and electrodialysis are basically electricity driven uh, desalination applications. Therefore, it's uh, more feasible to connect uh, and there is no role of heat here. Uh, but the reverse osmosis plants definitely uh, require more stable supply sources. Therefore, uh, integrating photovoltaics directly to RO plants without storage is still under R&D. Uh, on the side of uh, solar thermal based uh, desalination plants, uh, the variety is more. Uh, solar thermal plant basically produces electricity as well as heat. Therefore, it ideally combines with the multi-stage flash and multi-effect desalination where both of the resources are utilized. But uh, they can also be used in membrane desalination or thermally uh, driven vacuum compression desalination and also in uh, reverse osmosis plants. When we talk about the maturity of individual technologies uh, on the graph on the right side, we can see that uh, on a very small scale or the small scale, um, the photovoltaic uh, fed reverse osmosis plant uh, supplied with some kind of backup, uh, either a battery or a grid are, are the ones which are at the top level in terms of maturity. Small scale applications are already running on a commercial basis and uh, uh, the medium scale is generally uh, available as a demonstration project. Then comes the multi-effect desalination technologies, which are basically fed through the uh, concentrated solar uh, power plants. And it's basically under the R&D on the medium scale, which also has the promising uh, price favorability, but in the small scale, scale, uh, we can see some demonstration projects around the world as well. Uh, I already indicated that uh, an off-grid photovoltaic fed reverse osmosis plant uh, without a battery is uh, very favorable in the future, but uh, because the present RO technologies require more uh, reliable and constant based uh, supply source, therefore, uh, uh, this this kind of plant is in uh, research and development, and if it uh, um, uh, has the potential of commercialization, it will uh, give a great benefit to uh, the island states. So if we summarize in terms of uh, fewer uh, technological combinations, I would rank a photovoltaic fed a reverse osmosis as the uh, most commercially viable uh, uh, solution for the island states. Uh, it uh, gives lower cost of water production. Uh, we have number of commercial plants and pilots already running around the world. And uh, uh, it of course needs a storage of electricity or uh, uh, a grid connection to avoid any supply fluctuations uh, uh, as per the present technology uh, available. Then on the uh, second uh, level, I would rank the uh, concentrated solar power plant based reverse osmosis. Uh, it is generally more efficient than uh, the solar thermal multi-effect desalination when we talk about the medium scale. Um, it is, of course, more suitable uh, for the larger scale as well, uh, but it is at present in the research and development and demonstration phase. Then in the third level, it comes the uh, concentrated solar panel-based multi-effect desalination. 
uh, it finds favorability when the water salinity is high in an area because with higher salinity it requires more uh, push against uh, the natural osmotic pressure and therefore the reverse osmosis plants require more energy in this kind of uh, situation uh, of course the multi-effect distill uh, distillation technology has the flexibility bonus uh, in, uh, and also this uh, provision of simultaneous use of heat and electricity which is uh, particularly very beneficial for the energy system as a whole in terms of optimum utilization of all kind of resources so now I will uh, present a few slides on uh, the cost trends uh, which I have just taken primarily from an IRENA's assessment report on small island states uh, uh, which was happened uh, in 2015. The report actually compared uh, the renewable energy desalination solutions with the fossil powered uh, desalination. Uh, comparison was basically done on uh, the levelized cost of water production uh, for a uh, scale of plants uh, ranging between 250 to 2000 cubic meters per day. Uh, uh, in this slide you can see two uh, graphs. Uh, the first one is actually showing the levelized water cost for reverse osmosis plants producing 250 to 2000 meter cube per day. We can see the general electricity supply cost in islands can vary from $0.2 uh, per kilowatt hour to $0.5 per kilowatt hour. And against that variation, we can see the levelized water cost can be between $1.5 per meter cube to uh, $3.3 per meter cube. Um, of course, this is the conventional uh, fossil-based uh, uh, power grids we have in today's world. And on the right side of the graph, you can see the levelized water cost of uh, multi-effect desalination plant with electricity prices uh, in the same range. Here, of course, the horizontal axis is shown in terms of the diesel fuel cost price to just to indicate that um, the fuel uh, cost uh, rise can have a bigger effect on, uh, can have a significant on, uh, effect on the water cost uh, for the islands. Uh, it's also kind of a situation where uh, uh, it becomes a political problem as well. So, for example, for a diesel cost of $1 per liter, we can say uh, that this kind of technology will cost the water production around $5 uh, per meter cube, but uh, the same fuel cost rising about 30%, then it can also have an increment effect of $1.5 on the price of, uh, of water production. Um, so the first comparison on this slide is basically a grid connected photovoltaic fed reverse osmosis solution. Um, the uh, IRENA report assessed two types of plant uh, configuration. The first type is the uh, uh, photovoltaic providing seven hours of production and the rest is being fed through the electricity grid and uh, the cost is calculated using the weighted average approach. And the graph indicates that under this configuration, the cost of water production is roughly around $2.4 to $3.3 per meter cube, which we can see against the reference status quo uh, to be quite comparable. And uh, because it has the other benefits uh, of, uh, from the climatic perspective, um, the renewables are already competing with the conventional sources uh, uh, in terms of desalination applications. Uh, the other configuration of the same plant is uh, 24 hours supply from photovoltaic uh, with the battery storage provision and uh, it's an off-grid solution. Uh, under this category, the report assesses that the price of production of water increases almost uh, uh, two folds and it roughly comes in the range of $5.5 to $5.8 per meter cube. Uh, so therefore, uh, the economic uh, financial viability of this configuration is still uh, requires much more improvement. The second uh, uh, solution uh, that was assessed in the IRENA's report is uh, the solar thermal uh, fed reverse osmosis plant. Uh, when we compare it with the reference status quo, uh, we can see that the rough range of uh, water production cost for such kind of combination comes uh, from $2.5 per meter cube to $3.3 per meter cube. Of course, uh, with the increasing norm 
thermal irradiation of uh, sun, uh, the price favorability increase, increases and uh, that uh, increases uh, the economic viability of the, this kind of solution over the status based solutions. Sorry. Uh, so uh, the uh, last combination that I would present in this uh, presentation is uh, the uh, concentrated solar plant fed to multi-effect distillation plant. And of course, you can see that against the uh, status quo uh, fossil powered uh, desalination solutions based on the reverse osmosis, the price comparison doesn't indicate any favorability of this kind of scheme. Uh, we can see roughly the range of water production costs are around five to seven dollars per meter cube. But let me remind you that uh, in the previous slide I showed that the conventional fossil based power plant feeding to a multi effect distillation also comes around this range. So if we I go back to that slide I can show you slightly. So on in in this graph on the right side you can see uh, the range of water production from the status quo uh, electricity sources based on multi effect distillation is from five to uh, $8.5 per meter cube. So when we see uh, uh, the graph of uh, concentrated solar fed uh, MED system, uh, in many cases, it becomes more favorable. Of course, uh, the plant design uh, has this critical parameter of storage, which can significantly affect on uh, the cost performance of such kind of plant. So if I uh, summarize the different technologies uh, considered in the report, this graph can actually show you a very good uh, exposure, a very good picture of the price comparison of different solutions which the report has assessed. Uh, when we start with the waste heat based uh, uh, multi-effect distillation, and that's the waste heat coming from some conventional a fossil-based power plant, it's the most favorable in terms of cost performance. But then comes uh, in terms of renewable, uh, the uh, photovoltaic-fed reverse osmosis plants, which has a favorable cost range from $1.8 uh, uh, $1 to $2.8 per meter cube, which is fairly comparable with the status quo solutions of reverse osmosis in the islands. Uh, then uh, after that, more promising uh, are basically the wind fed reverse osmosis plants or the uh, uh, concentrated solar plant based reverse osmosis plants. Uh, at the moment, uh, the uh, uh, multi effect distillation systems fed through renewable sources are higher in terms of their price performance. But uh, when we uh, consider the quality of the uh, uh, water uh, coming out from such plants, it's on the higher end because they are based on the evaporation principle. So uh, if I summarize the few uh, takeaways uh, from this case study and a little bit outlook for future, uh, the first uh, point would be that declining energy storage costs will definitely favor uh, uh, in, in more expansion of the renewable energy based desalination in future and particularly the uh, photovoltaic fed reverse osmosis solutions. Uh, in future, uh, flexible reverse osmosis desalination uh, attract more investors and energy companies. It's particularly important in, in context to energy companies uh, because the renewables always require more flexibility in, in the grids. And if the distillation plants can provide that flexibility, uh, I would think that uh, the resources will be more optimally utilized. Then uh, the IRENA report gave a very interesting area for exploration that was refilling of the overexploited groundwater uh, resources uh, with the desalinated water coming out from the renewable energy distillation solutions. And uh, when we focus on these kind of niche applications, I think uh, many of the renewable desalination solutions are favorable. Uh, then the bigger size of the renewable desalination plants are generally cost effective, especially when they are operating 
own uh, the low temperature waste heat and uh, uh, in this regard the multi uh, effect desalination technology is much more dominant uh, of course, asiding, uh, aside the maturing technology options, uh, the expansion of renewable energy desalination solutions requires uh, a better training and education facilities, information sharing on the best practices, and of course, the functioning supply chains. Uh, without that, the expansion of uh, renewable energy desalination will be very slow and may not be uh, 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 returning in terms of uh, future uh, uh, challenges of climate change. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. So over to Omar, please. Uh, thank you very much, Bilal, for a very, very comprehensive presentation on the uh, use of solar uh, energy in water desalination, especially in the context of island states. Uh, we have one question here from uh, the participants. Uh, the question is, uh, what size of RO plants are generally recommended in island states? Um, so, uh, do you have an answer for that? Uh -huh. um generally it depends on the uh, density of population within an island um, if an island is densely populated and there is sort of a central infrastructure uh, a plant size uh, in the medium range which is roughly a thousand meter cube per day to uh, 10,000 meter cube per day is much more frequent but in islands where the population is not very dense and there is no central infrastructure generally the smaller scale of plants uh, are more frequent uh, roughly in the range of uh, 20 meter cube per day to uh, 1,000 meter cube per day um, thank you. Uh, secondly, um, I wanted to ask uh, regarding the charts uh, which you presented earlier. Uh, so, uh, in those charts, you considered the price of diesel uh, for uh, um, as a comparison uh, with the CSP. Um, so, uh, basically, what we are uh, saying is that the diesel-based generators are mainly used in the island uh, in the island states. So that is why we are going for diesel, or is there some other, you know, reason? Uh, what I assume is that Maldives, it, uh, it's, it's a SARC member state, and it uses a lot of there's a lot of consumption of diesel in those island states. Uh, so um, is this the reason why a comparison for diesel is presented? Hello. Hello, can you hear me, Bilal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could hear you till Maldives. After that, I couldn't understand. Okay, so uh, you know that Maldives, it consists of so many islands and the diesel consumption in Maldives is very high. Uh, in in mm -hmm. your uh, charts, uh, you presented a comparison of the price of solar desalination as a factor of diesel price. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, um, does the IRENA report it only consider diesel in its uh, calculations for the small island states? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, in the island states, most of the fossil source of energy is coming through uh, the diesel-based solutions. Uh, but of course, it will have a little bit mix from the gas and uh, uh, other oil products, but it is majorly driven based on the diesel solutions. Okay, so we have one uh, question from a participant, Ms. F uh, Anila Fatima. She's asking, uh, do you have any knowledge of any small scale water desalination plants in Pakistan using solar energy? Um, I think there is one which is uh, already developed uh, in uh, uh, this new coastal city we have, uh, but I am not confirmed whether uh, it's based on uh, the solar fed uh, reverse uh, at the moment, but there is a potential uh, for Gwadar to build such kind of plants. Uh, just to um, you know, expand on this question, um, what I know is that uh, in around like 1970s and 80s, there was an effort by the government of Pakistan to introduce uh, solar-based uh, desalination technology in Gwadar because you know it has always has been uh, very it lacks uh, proper you know uh, water access. Uh, so, uh, PICRIT was uh, given the mandate to 
provide uh, desalinated water using solar energy to those communities uh, living in uh, Gawadar. Uh, but I don't know of the current status as well. So, yeah. yeah. So we are done with the questions here. Um, uh, dear participants, if you have any more questions, you may uh, you please feel free to uh, send your questions and uh, we will direct these questions uh, to our expert. Um, Bilal, thank you very much uh, for uh, your comprehensive presentation. Um, next presentation. Yeah. Um, the next presentation is basically an overview of the uh, current solar desalination technologies. So I'll be uh, giving this presentation. So basically the purpose of uh, this presentation is to give you a holistic overview of the solar technologies which are currently uh, you know, uh, in the world. Uh, there are uh, basically the two main types of solar technologies uh, which are used for desalination purposes are the solar thermal and solar PV based technologies. So in this, as a part of this presentation, we'll be going through both of uh, these technologies and how uh, they can be integrated and how they are actually integrated uh, with different kinds of solar desalination. Um, we will also be going through the uh, economics of the solar desalination uh, uh, regarding different technologies, and finally, we would be coming. Uh, we would be discussing a case study um, um, for uh, solar thermal desalination. So, um, the structure of the presentation. First of all, uh, the general information uh, regarding desalination would be discussed. Why desalination is important. Um, the rationale uh, for introducing and using uh, desalinated water, you know, in the light of global water crisis and uh, a comparison of. As, then we'll move on to small scale desalination efforts, which usually involves solar stills. Um, as I was uh, earlier answering Ms. Fatma Anila regarding the uh, introduction of solar desalination by Pikrit in Gawadar. So basically, those were in the form of solar stills. The, 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 that the solar cell technology was introduced in Gawad. It's a very old technology, and we will be discussing that in detail. Then we'll move on to the large-scale desalination efforts, which includes reverse osmosis, electrodialysis, multiple effect distillation, and multi-stage flash distillation. Uh, Mr. Bilal has briefly touched these uh, desalination technologies, but I'll be explaining uh, these technologies in greater detail. Then finally, uh, we will be going through the uh, implementation of solar energy, the cost, comparative cost analysis, the technical challenges, and the case study. So, freshwater resources basically they are depleting rapidly as the global demand for water continues to increase. Uh, because of rising demand for natural resources combined with the effects of climate change, especially in dry land and coastal inland regions. Um, as a result, one out of 11 people lack access to clean water. And this is a problem for both developing nations as well as developed nations. The United Nations Environmental Program, UNEP, it mentions in one of their findings in 2012 that one third of the world's population have access to fresh water resources for their livelihood, while the rest will suffer acute water shortages by the year 2025. It means that the two thirds of the world population would be uh, considered water stressed. By 2025, uh, around 1.8 billion people will also be living in areas of absolute water scarcity. In many arid regions, the surface water resources and shallow wells being are being depleted at an unsustainable rate. So uh, drilling to access the water table is costly and it requires specialized drilling and pumping equipment. Additionally, the shallow wells and surface water resources uh, often contain poor quality water that can be brackish and salty. So this particular, uh, this particular uh, scenario and case is uh, very evident in the Middle East. Uh, the small states like Qatar, Bahrain, they have, uh, even if you manage to find the water resources below the land, those water resources are often of very poor quality and uh, they can be basically considered brackish water. 
then consumption of poor quality water can obviously lead to adverse health effects and almost 3.4 million people die every year from water related diseases so the water scarcity trend is projected to increase as global population increases uh, right now human population is growing at a rate that puts stress on our current fresh water supply uh, currently global global water use is, is around 9 trillion cubic meters a year and this rate is expected to increase by approximately 60 billion cubic meters more per year as a result uh, we have to uh, take care of our fresh water resources and we need to explore new water resources which could be in the form of water desalination uh, let's have a look at the world regions which are deeply affected by the lack of fresh water as you can clearly see in the infographic uh, middle east north africa and south asia are among one of the most affected regions in the world almost 358 million people in the in africa they don't have access to clean water um, 180 million people in southwest and central asia they don't have access to uh, clean water this clean water also includes not having access to fresh water as well uh, then 186 million people in southeast asia east asia and Oce oceania region they don't have uh, fresh water availability and overall around 770 million people lack fresh water access so how to address the problem uh, we have a solution in the form of desalination the best way to grapple with this situation uh, is desalination because it it can play a leading role in increasing the supply of fresh water in both developing as well as developed nations um, let's talk about the definition of desalination uh, desalination is the process by which salts and other dissolved solids are removed from water in order to produce water which is suitable for human consumption as well as agricultural purposes desalination not only pertains to sea and ocean water but it also involves the removal of salts from brackish water such as agricultural and industrial waters today developments in desalination technologies are specifically aimed at reducing energy consumption and cost so solar desalination is a technique which could potentially reduce energy consumption by desalinating water using solar energy and there are two basic methods of achieving desalination using this this technique which are direct and indirect solar desalination let's have a look at the comparison of desalination for seawater and brackish water uh, and see that what do we exactly mean by seawater and brackish water generally the concentration of total dissolved solids in seawater is 3.5 to 35 times greater than the concentration is in brackish water which means that the desalination of brackish water is significantly cheaper uh, and easier to carry out um, we need to look at the resource availability of brackish water uh, generally it is available in many nations and the availability is inland which means that you know the saline areas the saline earth which are affected by the salinity they usually contain brackish water but because the concentration is not as high as sea water therefore it's easier to carry out desalination and much cheaper to carry out desalination for such an area finally moving uh, before moving towards the technology discussion of technologies let us uh, discuss the current status of desalination in the world there are around 18,436 desalination plants worldwide as of 2015, according to International Desalination Association. These have a commissioned capacity of 92.5 million cubic meters per day, catering for water needs of over 300 million people globally. The desalination plants with high production capacities are mostly installed in the Middle East region. Seawater desalination in the MENA or the Middle East region uh, are uh, it's, it's on the rise because they have an acute shortage of portable water resources and the desalination capacity in the Middle East region represents 44% of the global desalination capacity. 
Currently, there are 2,800 desalination plants in the Middle East region, and it produces around 37.3 million cubic meters uh, per day of potable water. Despite the huge capacity in the Middle East region, other regional centers of activity are also becoming very, very prominent, such as the Mediterranean Sea, the Red Sea, and the coastal waters of California, China, and Australia. The reason why desalination plants are so widespread in the Middle East region is because the countries in the Gulf region, they face the largest per capita water scarcity in, in the world, with an average water availability of less than 300 cubic meters per capita per year. In comparison, right now, Pakistan is being, you know, uh, talked about as a water stress region, and we have a uh, per capita availability of around 1,000 cubic meters per year. So you can well imagine the kind of stress the Middle East region is going uh, regarding water. So desalination is very, very practical in these seas because, uh, especially in the Gulf region, because they have lower salinity than the ocean. Uh, which lowers the energy consumption requirement. So this is a this is also a very important aspect. Um, if this generally the seas around the Gulf region they have lower salinity as compared to the Arabian Ocean nearby. Now let's move on to the desalination solutions. Uh, first, we'll discuss the small scale desalination solutions for uh, single family and you know small households. So the major methods of providing fresh water for inhabitants of rural, uh, rural areas include drilling, piping, trucking, resettlement, and desalination. Uh, in the long term, drilling for fresh water is generally preferred, uh, but it is a very expensive activity and it requires highly technical and expensive drilling equipment. Moreover, as we discussed earlier, especially for the Middle East region, the drilling process would often lead to brackish water and therefore it's unsuitable for human consumption. Uh, due to the high cost of most desalination technologies and other water production techniques, use of solar still technology is recommended uh, as the main method of desalination for both single and multi-family households. Solar stills are best utilized in situations where the demand for fresh water is very small and the land is inexpensive. Solar stills are themselves a very uh, inexpensive technology and they require very less technical knowledge to design and construct. And they can help promote self-reliance and enable small rural communities to develop further. The desalination technologies for larger operations have a significant capital cost and energy requirement. Um, and for the larger uh, the cities and towns, uh, the European Union uh, funded a report which assessed that uh, the best low cost and effective desalination method for local urban areas is electric. The recommended technology is solar still, and for urban areas, uh, it's uh, the solar dialysis method. Moving on to the technical aspects of solar stills. Uh, solar stills are uh, very, very old. Uh, it's a very old technology which dates back to the 19th century. A solar still is made of an airtight insulated basin, as shown in the picture, uh, that is covered with tilted glass sheet and transparent glass or plastic cover and is absorbed by salty or brackish water in the basin so that the water is heated and uh, evaporated. The water vapor condenses at the inner side of the glazing. Basins are painted black in order to increase solar absorption and long wavelength radiation cannot pass from the solar still through the glazing. In other words, the greenhouse effect makes the solar still look like a heat trap. A solar still needs flushing to prevent salt precipitation and the flushing frequency depends on the quality of Uh, fresh water production varies anywhere between two to seven liters uh, per day and uh, these water production variations are due to the design and geometry of the solar stills. Let us uh, discuss the pros and cons. Not need chemical treatment uh, in order to pre-treat the water. 
The disadvantage is that uh, it has a very low production yield of two to seven liters per cubic meter of uh, covered area per day. Uh, it is not economically viable for large scale applications and it requires a large land area if we want to size up the operations. There are different variations in solar stills. Uh, mainly solar stills can be classified as passive or active stills. Passive stills will use only the solar energy falling into the unit. In active stills, an external thermal energy source is added to the unit to aid heat addition to the salty or brackish water. Additional heat could be provided by a concentrating solar panel, waste thermal energy, or a conventional boiler. Uh, another classification of solar still is based on the geometry, uh, such as single slope or double slope glazing cover, vertical solar still, conical solar still, and multiple stage solar still. Uh, apologies uh, for the network disconnection uh, we have just reconnected um, there was some issue on our end i hope that i'm audible right now so uh, i was uh, mentioning the uh, solar still variations so uh, let me uh, restart this slide uh, basically, solar stills can be classified as passive or active stills. Passive stills only use the solar energy falling into the unit, while in active stills, an external thermal energy source is added to the unit to aid heat addition to the salty or brackish water. Uh, in, the, in the picture in this slide, you can see a multi-stage solar collector. Uh, in this solar collector, uh, it, we, you can clearly see an external source of heat. Uh, which is the sun, a solar heater, which is basically a heat exchanger, and a vacuum pump, which could enhance the evaporation rate. So uh, such solar, solar stills, basically they capture more energy and in turn they increase the overall uh, desalination rate of the uh, equipment. Moreover, uh, there are more other variations which could be added to a solar still, for example, the cover. It can be made of glass or other transparent materials and can be given a number of different glossy finishes that vary in efficiency of the amount of water condensed. Uh, moreover, additives can be added, such as solar stills use brine or other substances to aid in water absorption. Uh, the spout runoff uh, after the clean water falls out of the still, the spout runoff can be put through a variety of runoff techniques for further cleaning, for example, slow sand filter. Here uh, we have an example of uh, Aquamate solar still. Basically, it's a portable variation used for seawater and uh, mainly used by US military and life raft survival kits. Uh, in this solar still, the clean water falls into the donut of the boy and can be uh, sucked through drinking tube. Moreover, we have another product called Elio Domestico. It is a ceramic pot that utilizes basic concept of boiling. The sun heats the black boiler on the top 
turning it into steam, which is forced down an expansion nozzle where it condenses against the lid. It, the yield of this product is around five liters per day and the estimated cost is $50. So this is, these are some of the smaller um, applications of solar stills. If we want to scale up, we could use solar concentrators for uh, solar stills. Depending on the need, there are three types of concentrators which we could use. These are flat, parabolic, and dish tracking concentrators. In desalination applications, the concentrated solar energy can either directly heat the water to temperatures uh, in order to remove impurities, or it can focus the energy onto a plane of solar thermal collectors or PV panel that can then power desalination plants. In the dish type and parabolic type uh, concentrators, the energy of the sun it is focused onto solar thermal collectors and then it basically uh, it speeds up the water desalination process and the uh, and this is a very good example for scaling up the solar still technology now we move on to the large scale solar desalination methods there are two basic distillation processes that are currently in you globally in the use one is the membrane distillation process and other is thermal distillation process within the membrane distillation process we have the reverse osmosis and the electrodialysis reverse osmosis uh, constitutes around 60 percent of global desalination capacity while uh, in thermal processes we have the multi-effect distillation and multi-stage flash distillation Multi-stage flash distillation is the second most popular desalination technology in the world. So let us review the membrane method first, the reverse osmosis method. For understanding the reverse osmos osmosis method, we should first understand the uh, process of diffusion. Osmosis is basically a specialized type of diffusion and diffusion is the movement of a substance or particles from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. In osmosis, two solutions with different concentrations of dissolved solids and dissolved salts, they are separated by a semi-permeable membrane as shown here in the picture. Osmosis is the natural movement of solvent through the semi-permeable membrane from low concentration of the solvent to the side with the high concentration of the solvent in order to establish an equilibrium. The RO technology is based on the properties of semi-permeable membranes which can separate water from a saline solution when excess of osmotic pressure is applied on the membrane systems. So reverse osmosis occurs when a force is applied to the side concentrated with the solute in this case salt and it causes the water to move towards the less concentrated side of the semi-permeable membrane thus producing producing fresh water the semi-permeable membrane only allows water to flow through leaving the salts behind solar pv powered ro systems are getting very popular these days due to the modularity and easy scalability of both pv and ro elements while solar thermal RO plants are way behind in terms of commercialization. Many PV based RO systems have been built and field tested and all of these systems are uh, at community scale producing between 100 liters and 60 cubic meters of water per day. Let us discuss the key features of reverse osmosis. It is the most common method as almost 60% of desalination plants in the world are RO plants. Secondly, it's easy and readily available to use. It can be immediately, the RO plants can be immediately started or stopped. The RO desalination is also suited and used for small scale plants in rural areas or islands where there is no other water supply available. For example, most desalination plants in the Caribbean area, they use RO systems. Thirdly, Typically, a seawater RO plant produces 55 to 65 liters of fresh water for each 100 liters of seawater through multiple stages. So we can assume that the overall efficiency of RO plants is around 65 percent. Moreover, they use low, they have low energy consumption of 3.5 to 5, 5 kilowatt hours of electricity per cubic meter of clean water produced. And the ultra filtration of membranes and renewable energy is making this technology more suitable. 
Typical seawater salinity, which is suited to RO system, is around 35,000 ppm of dissolved solids. However, in some regions such as Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf, the total dissolved solid content is higher, uh, around 41,000 to 45,000 ppm. In these regions, therefore, seawater uh, leads to high fouling uh, and high surface temperature. Therefore, appropriate feed water pretreatment is carried out uh, in those areas prior to RO desalination. The pretreatment of salt water is also required to increase the life of the membranes and to avoid fouling on the membranes. The pretreatment includes steps such as pre-filtration and anti-scaling treatment. Now let's move on to the second membrane method, which is the electrodialysis method. Um, the electrodialysis separation process basically it works uh, at ambient pressure and utilizes an electric potential to feed salt through an ion selective membrane leaving fresh water behind the total dissolved solids are removed from the feed seawater and instead of the reverse thus making it unique from all other main desalination processes as the feed water flows through the negative salt ions pass through the anion porous membrane to a positive electrode, whereas the positive salt ions pass through the cation porous membrane towards a negative electrode. And the in the photovoltaic electrodialysis, uh, basically the electrodes are connected to an outside PV source in the container of the salt water as shown here in the picture. Uh, it removes water salinity as water processed through ion selective membranes positioned between two electrodes as shown in the figure. Due to the energy requirements of the process, electrodialysis is much more cost effective for solar for lower salinity water and it is typically implemented for purification only with brackish water resources. So uh, electrodialysis cannot be used for seawater, it can only be used for brackish water available within the land. Currently, electrodialysis accounts for almost 3.6% of global desalination capacity and it is suitable for TDS of up to 12,000 milligram per liter and the energy consumption is quite less 1.5 to 4 kilowatt hour per meter cube uh, for feed water with 1500 to 3500 ppm solids and the typical plant maximum capacity could be around 45,000 cubic meters per day. Thirdly then we move on to the thermal methods uh, let's first discuss the multi-stage flash method the solar powered uh, multi stage flash method is shown in the picture here. Uh, it's type of a thermal desalination that involves a solar source to heat salt water between 900 and 110, uh, 90 and 110 degrees centigrade under high pressure. And it is then passed through a series of chambers which are shown here uh, on the picture. The salt water passes through several successive chambers, each with a lower pressure than the preceding one. This results in even more vaporization of salt water called flash. The evaporated water is recollected and recondensed into refined water. The water that did not vaporize exits the system with a higher concentration and is discarded appropriately as waste, while the refined water is discharged into the municipal water supply as potable water. MSF is a frequently used thermal technology in the Middle East and uses fossil fuels for uh, running the plant. The world's largest desalination plants operate on this technology with their specific energy consumption in the range of 81 to 106 kilowatt hours per cubic meter for a temperature difference between inlet seawater and hot brine of 10 to 45 degrees centigrade. Currently, MSF accounts for almost 26.8% of global desalination capacity and the energy consumption is around 80.6 kilowatt hour of heat plus around 2.5 to 3.5 kilowatt hour of electricity per cubic meter of water. The second thermal method is multiple effect distillation, which is called MED. It is uh, basically it includes heating salt water under pressure, which is then made to flow through a series of chambers. The heat for causing evaporation in the first chamber is provided by solar energy or by combustion of fossil fuels. Uh, and vapors thus formed are used to heat the feed water in the subsequent chambers. Here in the attached picture, you can see that a solar field is used to heat the fluid in the first chamber. And basically, this is uh, this is in, in this MED, the solar thermal technologies such as the parabolic 
uh, parabolic uh, dishes, they can be easily used for heating the water and heating the input feed. However, in this process, the water, uh, the water vapor from each chamber at high pressure is used to heat the water in the subsequent chamber at a lower pressure than the preceding chamber. And this sequence is replicated, uh, resulting in the separation of condensed water vapor and the production of more water vapor as the stages progresses. Now let's uh, look at the pros and cons of MED as compared to MFD. MED, it operates at lower temperatures of approximately 70 degrees centigrade as compared to M MF, uh, M MSF, which operates at around 110 degrees centigrade. So it helps reduce the tube corrosion and the likely scale formation around the tube surfaces. Secondly, the low pretreatment and operational costs uh, of uh, MED, they, um, they basically uh, are possible because the quality of feed water is not as essential as in the case of RO processes. The power consumption of MED is lesser than that of MSF processes, and we can achieve higher performance efficiency in MED plants as compared to MSF uh, in regards to heat transfer and fresh water production cost. Finally, uh, we'll move towards the third section, which is the solar energy potential in desalination efforts. So, uh, the addition of solar energy sources to desalination efforts can make the process more sustainable. And uh, because the fossil fuel prices are predicted to continue to increase, uh, while the price of solar energy technologies are going to decrease in the, expect in the immediate future, so that makes a viable business case. There are two major ways solar energy can be utilized in desalination efforts. First is the distillation processes, which are driven by heat produced directly from solar energy systems. And second is the membrane and distillation processes, which are driven by electricity produced by the solar PV systems. The solar energy sources, uh, which are utilized in desalination are solar thermal, solar PV and concentrated solar power. And solar energy can also be used on a case to case basis, depending on the sources of energy available in a given area. So, for example, in small island states, uh, the RO technology could be used while in the brackish water areas, the um, MSF or uh, MED technologies can be easily used. Let's uh, now look at the comparative cost analysis of different uh, desalination technologies. Uh, in general, as a matter of principle, desalination based on renewable energy sources is still expensive if compared with conventional desalination, as both investment and generation costs of renewable energy are currently higher. However, under certain circumstances, for example, installations in remote areas where distributed energy generation is more convenient than extending centralized uh, electricity grid, uh, for transmission and distribution. So in such areas, so renewable energy desalination could compete with conventional systems. As far as capital costs and operation and maintenance cost is concerned, a comparison of two most used conventional desalination systems, that is the RO and MSF shows that the MSF plants requires higher capital cost, while the RO plants requires higher operation and maintenance cost due to the plant complexity. And for as for overall desalination cost, significant reductions have occurred over the past years. But water desalination remains economically affordable only for middle income to higher income countries. And it is very expensive for poor countries. The typical production cost of conventional desalination plants running on fossil fuel is between one to two US dollar per cubic meter of water produced. However, with the rapid decrease of solar energy costs, the technical advances and the increasing number of installations, the solar desalination is likely to reduce significantly in cost in the near future. And it could potentially become an important source of water supply for regions affected by water scarcity. Now, we have some technical challenges to solar desalination. The first one is that we need to tailor solar power technologies to basically power the desalination plants. Uh, the major issue is that solar power technologies were not originally developed with, uh, in, with the view of powering desalination plants, and instead, generally, they were developed with the goal of providing electrical energy. 
for example pv systems by definition they convert solar power to electrical energy moreover solar thermal systems they generally harvest heat energy and convert this heat to electrical energy via steam turbines and this conversion uh, of electric this conversion to electrical energy it basically includes approximately 40% losses however many desalination systems can be powered by pressure or heat energy directly without use of electrical energy so as a result there are considerable technical challenges to adapt solar energy systems in order to power the desalination systems and the researchers and the industry they need to find solutions for optimally powering the desalination through solar the second technical challenge is the uh, to avoid the hyperbole and face the challenge head on um for the proper development of cost effective and energy efficient powered desalination system the challenge is not as much technical as it is intellectual uh, the issue is that promoters for example private solar power corporations they sometimes optimistically overstate the efficiencies and cost efficiency of solar technologies uh, as well as the solar power desalination systems as a result there is an under appreciation of the technical challenges involved to ensure the systems are cost effective and energy efficient uh, evidence of this disconnect is that the deployment of some large systems of desalination uh, powered by pv uh, these large systems are neither cost efficient and not, not energy efficient despite the claims by the uh, project developers also the deployment of solar powered desalination system in remote arid region it involves considerable risk requiring considerable r and d into uh, finding the solutions of these problems and risks the third challenge is uh, a need for better determination of saline and brackish water reserves although there is an excellent knowledge of the geographical location in the world with high solar insulation and we know that where pv and energy resource availability is high and where it's low but when we come to the desalination systems we need to have the similar kind of mapping for sources of sea water or brackish water this is because the desalination of brackish water involves considerably less energy cost hence there is a need for more knowledge of brackish water reserves and uh, what is needed is a detailed world map of brackish water reserves unfortunately uh, because certain brackish water reserves can be associated with petroleum and natural gas reserves uh, so the maps of those brackish water reserves are sometimes made proprietary by those uh, exploration companies and they are not shared with the general population finally uh, we will discuss the idea of solar ponds the solar energy from the sun is basically absorbed by salt water uh, which causes the pond to heat off the ambient air causes the top layer of water to cool off but the air basically rises from the bottom and the cooler water sinks from the top and this pond is designed in such a way that the top layer is less dense and therefore less saline while the bottom layer is denser and more saline and thermal energy basic because the sand uh, because the salt it uh, gets collected in the lower
um, i hope uh, you can hear me now uh, apologies for uh, another disconnection um, so uh, let's quickly move towards the case study of uh, solar water desalination in al khabji region in saudi arabia this plant utilizes a ultra high concentrator uh, pv system and uh, basically there are three phases to the plant in the first phase uh, the solar power desalination plant with a capacity of 30 million liters per day will be constructed uh, in the second phase uh, the construction of a second solar power desalination plant of uh, around uh, 3000 million liters per day will be constructed and in the third phase the construction of additional solar power desalination plants across Saudi Arabia will be carried out so all these three phases are projected to be completed by 2020 and as a result Saudi Arabia will become one of the largest uh, producers of desalinated water in the world and all this uh, desalination technology this will be driven by solar pv based generation uh, now let's uh, move towards the conclusions of this presentation so uh, solar thermal it can either be direct or indirect uh, the direct solar thermal it basically uh, condenses and uh, collects the water into a one unit while in indirect solar thermal condenser the condenser is connected externally to the collectors uh, the direct systems are relatively low cost and simple to construct um, the example being solar still but they of course require large area of land and they have low fresh water production as discussed earlier they are ideally suitable for the uh, rural areas uh, because the land availability is large and the population is generally you know uh, dispersed over a large uh, area in urban areas the electrodialysis was the recommended uh, technology uh, within indirect systems med and msf are able to produce greater quantities of fresh water but of course they have a higher capital cost um, secondly solar panels can be used to generate electrical energy which can be used for the ro process as Mr. Bilal uh, in his presentation earlier explained, our process is generally the cheapest technology for solar desalination right now. Um, the fluctuations in the power generation, uh, they can also be expected as the input of solar energy can change with the weather. And as a result, uh, the power fluctuations could decrease the efficiency of the R O process. Uh, however, the battery storage could be introduced, which could deal with these fluctuations. Uh, finally, thank you very much for this presentation. Despite uh, so many interruptions and disruptions, uh, we again apologize for the uh, frequent internet disconnections and we hope that uh, you did not miss out on any important details. Um, let's uh, move on towards the questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, does desalination process also remove essential minerals for the water too? Um, this question is uh, has been asked by Mr. Essen. Uh, so basically there are various desalination technologies when we consider the RO desalination. So within the RO desalination process, the essential minerals uh, of the water, uh, basically they are removed in ultra high RO plants. Uh, for example, uh, if we take the example of uh, these water bottlers, um, which provide uh, mineral waters. So uh, in those uh, plants, the, the, the ultra uh, high capacity RO with, uh, is used. Basically, it strips the water of all kinds of mineral. And uh, later on, uh, when the, uh, out, in, within the output, the minerals are added separately as per the specifications. Uh, of that particular company uh, so that is the case with mineral water but in uh, desalination processes which are carried out for general population we can always choose uh, the membranes in of, of such sizes which could allow the essential minerals for the water so it depends on the type of the application but generally in ro the reverse osmosis the essential minerals are stripped off while in other desalination technologies that's not the case um, the second question is uh, is there any distinctive order in the purified water? Uh, so basically in all the desalination uh, technologies, uh, the indirect desalination technologies which you mentioned, the pre-treatment and the post-treatment of the water is carried out. 
generally the char charcoal filters are used in order to uh, um, if, if there is any distinctive color in the water that color is removed through charcoal filters if there is any distinctive order that is also used through those filters um, thirdly the cost comparison of producing water from ro and solar still so uh, i guess we have gone through this in one of the slides uh, let me go through here again so the competitive cost analysis uh, of all the solar desalination technologies is provided in this table here this table is basically taken from uh, international uh, energy agency uh, and here the comparison of ro and solar still can be carried out uh, the water cost uh, for solar still it's been given as anywhere between 1.3 to 6.5 us dollars per cubic meter of water produced uh, of course it depends on as we discussed earlier there are different varieties within solar stills so it depends on the kind of solar still which you are using its uh, size and uh, the kind of material used for constructing the solar still uh, but generally the given range is 1.3 to 6.5 us dollars of cubic meter um, for uh, solar uh, uh, reverse osmosis uh, the there are different ranges given uh, for brackish water the cost is between 6.5 to 9.1 us dollar per cubic meter and for sea water the cost is 11.7 to 15.6 dollars per cubic meter so uh, clearly the uh, on a cost comparison on a per cubic meter of water produced the reverse osmosis systems they are uh, much more expensive as compared to solar stills but then again it all depends on the type of application if the amount of water required is very less uh, and you need to uh, provide water to uh, um, let's say an island state with a, a population of less than 100 people and large area then solar stills can easily be used but if uh, water is to be provided to a population of let's say around 1000 people and more than 1000 people uh, solar still would not make a viable business case as a large uh, area would be required to achieve that kind of you know water uh, supply uh, in those cases uh, reverse osmosis is one of the better technologies uh, and because the uh, as compared to uh, med or msf the reverse osmosis pv it is currently in the application stage while other technologies are currently in r and d stages so uh, it varies on a case to case basis uh, let me check if we have some more questions so yeah we are uh, done with the questions if you have any more questions so uh, feel free to uh, write those uh, in the form of email we would be glad to answer the uh, provide answers to your questions secondly uh, this particular webinar uh, basically it's a series of two webinars so in the first webinar we covered the overall technical aspects of solar water desalination uh, as well as uh, their applicability to different scenarios uh, in the second uh, webinar in this series we will be concentrating uh, solely on the south asian region and the south region and uh, we would be uh, inviting experts who, who could speak about their experience within the region and the applicability of various solar desalination technologies within the region so uh, we'll be announcing the dates for the second webinar soon and uh, this webinar was basically setting the stage for the second webinar the essential basic overview has been provided and we hope that you join us for the second webinar as well uh, so that we could uh, have uh, special experts uh, on board who could answer your questions and who could clear your concepts regarding the applicability of solar desalination in our south asian context so uh, with this, uh, I would like to conclude our webinar. Uh, thank you everyone for attending today's session of the webinar. Uh, we listened uh, to an excellent presentation delivered by Mr. Bilal Hussain regarding the applicability of uh, solar desalination for island states. Um, all these presentations, they would be available on SARC Energy Center's website very shortly. Uh, the website is www.sarcenergy.org. Uh, we would love 
to hear from you any suggestions or comments for further improvement uh, moreover any suggested topics of interest on which you would like us to arrange future webinars uh, we would gladly do that and we would welcome your suggestions um, once again i would like to apologize for interruptions and uh, frequent disconnections uh, we uh, will try to minimize that in coming webinars uh, with this uh, i would like to sign out and thank you once again for joining us today and i look forward to seeing you next time uh, thank you and goodbye